When technical phenomenon combines all techniques into one whole, it becomes a monism. There is an identical nature to all techniques and universality to them despite all the different ways they can be applied. All techniques are thus inseparably united. Furthermore, it is an error to assume man is master to manipulate techniques to his will, either for good or evil intentions. Technique rests independent of man's morality, operating seemingly on its own. To try and guide technique is to rob it of its own character and strengths. Similarly, technical machines have nothing to do with the ideals of men. Alul relates technique to control and ordered systems, particularly in terms of the police and the propagandized structure of the state. He also brings up machinic automation and the displacement of workers caused by said automation. To show that technique in itself, and not the uses made of it, always leads to a certain amount of suffering, which cannot ever be separated from it, embedded in the very mechanism or nature of technique itself. Furthermore, if a particular technique proves possible, it will be implemented for a particular purpose. Nothing will be wasted. Such applications will of course produce certain effects, whether positive or negative, of which can never be fully accounted for. Thus the problems of our modern day are evolving rapidly, causing us to act and respond immediately, almost impulsively, without regards to precautions of what may come from them. A problem presents itself and technique solves the immediate problem, but does not consider or calculate the long-term rippling effects such a solution may have upon the system. Alul uses the example of the insecticide DDT, showing how it is impossible to foresee or predict all of the future consequences caused by technique which demands that everything it produces be applied upon the entire public. Human beings are thus helpless before the technical power that it cannot control, watching technique advance and produce more unpredictable events, whose consequences cannot be accounted for. To quote Alul, man, we repeat, is never able to foresee the totality of effects of his technique. Our solutions always present new unforeseen problems. And even if we were to reject certain techniques, say, that would put us on a completely new path, which of course would require a separate technical application. Either way, we are always being efficiently ordered by technique. Technical phenomenon cannot be controlled in such a manner so as to reject bad elements and retain good ones. It has within it a monistic whole of all elements, of which are all connected and interlinked like gears and springs within one monistic machine. Nothing functions freely or independently on its own. As production becomes more complex, techniques of organization and operation become necessary to maintain order. Thus, technical methods of distribution would be needed to deal with the problems of technical production. Labor was thus systematized down to a science. As material techniques became more precise, intellectual and psychic techniques, primarily education and propaganda, became necessary. And it is this necessity that characterizes the technical universe, where everything must be incorporated into its essence and play its part, again like grinding separate gears working together as one within a monumental machine, functioning for the utmost efficiency evolving new and more efficient techniques to replace those that came prior. How can man hope to modify such a system as this? Technique is acquired universally and does not require civilized man. Everyone appears on the same technical path, though they rest at different points in progression. Nonetheless, technical slavery accelerates onwards, imposing itself everywhere, across all contexts, with war and commerce acting as the catalyst leading to a rapid technolization of the world, which assumes a Western look. Technicians are used to educate and exploit underdeveloped nations for their natural resources, and in doing so, spread and disseminate technique itself, causing a technical invasion, killing off old ways of life for new technical ones. Culture thus collapses into one homogenous technical haze. Due to our current technically advanced stage, we are too far gone to go back to the way things traditionally were. Technique is nothing less than totalitarian, extending to whatever it touches and subordinating all to it. As it spreads, it desacralizes and destroys social and religious taboos, atomizing all to individual entities. Technique masters all and all becomes a technical civilization in this sense, where everything, including art, are all subordinate 
to its influence. Infected, the technical parasite controls all populaces of people who are transformed into it. All becomes technically identical. Despite our differences, the essence of man is one identical and essential technique. All melds back into one technical monism. Thus, a man no longer has need to discuss anything with his fellow man. Take into the same universal techniques, where all is already understood in terms of how to efficiently operate. Man is just like an operating machine in this sense. There is no longer a need to know or understand one another when we are all taken over to one monistic and universal technique. It is the universal language of all life. Autonomy, such as this, is the necessary basis for the development of all technique, closed and organized in order to efficiently operate. Technique is thus entirely self-sufficient, living within its own laws and determinancies, tolerating nothing outside itself, freed from all outside human intervention. It is the ultimate judge above everything. Man becomes the subject of this objective entity. Alul uses the example of bread manufacturing and how it adjusted the human taste, since the white loaf of Wonder Bread we see on the shelves barely resembles actual bread itself. Such is how deeply technique transforms us. The machine replaces man in more ways than the human mind can generally amass. Man, who once played a particular sport, is designated to sit and watch along the sidelines, where all becomes automated. In fact, it is far more efficient for the machine that man is removed, since man is generally the outright source of most of the errors in the technical equation, and the error must be eliminated. This is not to say man is to be removed, merely that he subordinate coldly and rationally to technique itself. For if men were truly free, technique would not be possible. Technique thus must and will prevail over the human person. Technique is the vampire that lives off the blood of the living. Serving technique, we have become unaware and unconscious of our own actions. Every human functions in a blurry haze. Even our physical bodies must be adapted to new technical demands each day, evolving to the will of technique. Man is forced to submit himself to the will of technique itself. And the more technique evolves, the more extreme it becomes. All are driven to go towards this extreme goal, ideologically indoctrinated by technique itself, under the guise of illusory liberties, individuality, and the farce of freedom. It's all done by technique to ensure its own sense of survival. Man can no longer step outside or escape from such a society, physically or spiritually, since there is nowhere now to escape to. All has become the same monistic technical civilization. Man does not get to decide his own destiny. All is foretold by technique. Only through it can man find the future. And technique's future is final. Man may love the mystery of the mystical and unknown, but this sense of sacrilegiousness, technique shatters. Technique nihilistically respects and worships nothing. It attacks and brings to light all that is unknown, turning everything into itself. It denies the mysteries of man a priori. Thus the shift where man thus makes technique sacred itself. Technique to man is now the essential mystery. To go back to Marx and the proletariat, is technique then not the sacred god that brings the proletariat their salvation? Marx said technique would free the proletariat, but how it will do so remains the mystery. For bourgeois technicians, it is the same, sacrificing and devoting their lives to its development. Technique is nothing short of sacred.